In this edition of The Plain Facts, we'll be taking an historical slice from the ancestors of today's cutting-edge VTOLs. And we'll look at some of the people behind and involved with the amazing P-47 Thunderbolt. These are The Plain Facts. Most of the world's frontline fighters have heritages that date back to the mid-1960s. This is also true regarding the West's only vertical takeoff and landing fighter, the Harrier Jump Jet. Of all the fighters in service during the last half of last century, it is the Harrier that was one of the most radical. But as the clock moves us forward into this new century, new thoroughbred fighters are emerging and the Harrier's replacement is an outstanding technical achievement. Lockheed's lineup of the three variants of the Joint Strike Fighter, or JSF, is an example of the next generation of strike aircraft. And the Stovall version is perhaps the most visually exciting. This craft was developed to take over the Harrier's role. So far, the JSF has commitments from the US Air Force, the US Navy, the US Marine Corps and the British Royal Navy. The story of VTOL aircraft begins way back in time. The Hawker P-1127 was a single jet engine plane and was the first real and workable VTOL. It was a pioneer that showed the world that a jet aircraft could take off and land like a helicopter, yet reach jet fighter speeds. This later P-1127 was called a Kestrel. And its first flight took place during March 1964, three and a half years after the first tentative hopper of the original P-1127. In horizontal flight, it performed admirably against the full-blown fighters of the day. But it could also make a vertical land. And this was the real strength of the craft. At the Farnsborough Air Show, two Kestrels showed a stunned crowd what they could do. They outperformed a Hunter fighter jet. They beat the Hunter in speed, range and rate of climb. The breakthrough to achieving reliable VTOL was the Pegasus engine. It was designed by the Bristol Siddeley Company, which became part of Rolls-Royce in 1966. The uniqueness of the engine was four rotatable nozzles that determined the aircraft's direction. The single jet engine was about eight foot long. However, for its day, it was extremely powerful. It generated about 21,500 pounds of thrust. With the nozzle unit already in place, the engine was lowered into the airframe. To give the plane maximum hover and landing maneuverability, the nozzles were arranged with two forward of the plane's center of gravity and two rearward. Two compressed air-driven motors were employed to drive a system of rods and chains, which moved all four nozzles in unison. Their full rotation is 99 degrees, and they can achieve that in one second. <laughs> 